everybody! Hello! How are you? Yes, I'm in my car. And look who I have with me. Hey everyone. The most handsome Mark McDaniel in the whole wide world that spells it M-A-R-C-M-C-D-A-N-I-E-L. Look him up. So, when you think about what's been going on today, how was your day? How is everything? Is everything going good? One time I told you, Tanya Stevens! Say hi to Tanya. Hi, Tanya. You gotta love that kid. So one time I told you guys I was gonna try to run errands as I did my Bible story. So guess what? I'm doing it! I am gonna run over here. <coughs> I got to. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm gonna run over here and pick up our dinner. And while he runs in and picks up our dinner, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little snippet of a couple of miracles that I think were simply amazing. And it looks like the sun's coming in pretty hot and heavy. So let me talk to you about one little thing. Have you ever been doing something and you did it because it was right and somebody said you shouldn't do that? They said that, oh, that's not right. You, that's, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. Um, maybe you did it on the wrong day. Or maybe you did it the wrong way. Or maybe people are just wacko jacko and who knows what they're even thinking. So what I want to share with you tonight is a story about Jesus healing a man and people saying, dude, you can't do that. Not today. You did something wrong. Why? Why were, so, why were people so upset and angry with what he was doing? Well, I'm going to share the reason behind the why with you in just one second. Try this one first, then this one. Okay, so Mark is going to run in, and he's going to grab our dinner, and you guys are to go with me and do some errands. How about that? Does that sound super fun? Because it is super fun. So, I want to, when Mark gets back, I'm going to have him do something, which is going to be uh, symbolic of the story. When you get back, I'm going to have him do something which is symbolic of the story. Hey, Uncle Louie and Aunt Violet. How is Anita? How is she doing? Is she doing okay? Those motorcycles are so loud, aren't they? If you like Harleys, you might want to just jump on and take a ride. That's what I'm thinking. Can't wait to get a... I don't even have a Harley. How am I going to take a Harley ride? So, what I, I'm so glad you guys are on. Thank you. Thank you for being on tonight. I think it's super awesome and super exciting that you're sharing your evening with me. And it looks like Cheryl Hines just jumped on. Hey, Cheryl. Thank you for getting on. Today is Aaron Day. So you caught me in the car running some errands and Mark is going to pick up our dinner and I'm going to use our dinner as an example for the story tonight. Tonight our story is out of Luke chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 and the scripture says, this is just a little snippet of what we're going to read about. So they went up to the roof, took off some tiles and lowered the sick man down into the crowd. Still on his mat right in front of Jesus seeing their faith Jesus said to the man son your sins are forgiven Wow so last night we talked about um, Job and we talked about the faith that he had to have oh tell Anita I am gonna keep to continue to pray for her I'm sorry I'm so sorry but she will get better. I believe she'll get better. So we talked about Job and we talked about the faith that Job had. That Satan was trying. He said, hey, can you find anybody that is good and godly? And Jesus is like, well, yeah, you checked out Job. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay. So we went through that story. But then it came to the end of the story where he was like, you know what? How, who am I to question God? So I love that fact because I think what happens a lot of times is that we um, we question God. What happens is we question the why. How did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did that have to happen? Can we do it a different way? God, can't you just fill me in? And you know something that's really ironic is God doesn't owe us any type of explanation whatsoever. He does not. So let me share with you about some more faith. I want to ask you how is your faith tonight? I have faith that Anita is going to get better. I want to ask you this. Oh, and there is Mark. Good. So, I want to ask you this. When you wake up in the mornings, and I think I've talked to you about this before, but I want to, I want to do a gentle reminder. 
when you wake up in the mornings and you go downstairs and if you're a coffee drinker, which I am, and you turn your Keurig on and you push the button, do you think your coffee is going to, your little K-cup pod or whatever, do you think that your coffee is going to make or do you think it's going to break? The majority of the time, we think I'm going to push the button and it's going to make me a cup of coffee. That's what we think. How about if you drive and you go out to your car? Do you, some cars have keys, some cars have key fobs, some cars just have a button. Do you think when you get up and you're going to work that your car, you're going to have four flat tires and your car is not going to start because you need a new battery? Is that your first thought? Probably not. Your first thought is probably, ah, oh, look what time it is. It's time for me to go to work. I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to just do this. Just like I did. I'm going to push the button. I'm going to put the key in, whatever it takes. And I'm going to go to work. Have you thought about when you go to the grocery store? Now, let's take COVID out of the picture. But when we went to the grocery store before, did we think, man, I hope they have tomato juice. Or I hope they have chicken noodle soup. Or I hope they have eggs. We go to the store thinking they're going to have what we need. Do you realize that that is faith? You have enough faith to get up in the morning and know your coffee pot's going to work. You have enough faith in the morning or in the evenings, depending on your work shift, that your car is going to start. You have enough faith to think when you go to the grocery store or if you're playing Xbox or PlayStation, you have enough faith to think if I hit that button and turn the power on, it's going to start. Mark, have you ever wondered if your Xbox is going to turn on? Not normally. Okay. No? Unless it's been like a power outage, but no, not normally. Okay. Let's get him on camera. Do you have, do you think that your thing won't start? No, I think it will. Normally. Okay. So you have enough faith to think that your Xbox is going to start? Absolutely. Okay. You heard it from, straight from the horse's mouth. So, he believes that if he goes into his room, that his Xbox is going to turn on his controller, which, what's it called, wireless? Yeah, I have a PlayStation though. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I, I don't know anything about game stations, sorry. So, his PlayStation, your controller, is wireless? Yep. Do you ever question that it's not going to work? Um... Not normally. Okay. It can die though. It can die. Okay. So it can run out of juice or whatever. All right. So the thing is, what I'm trying to prove to you is we have so much faith in earthly things that we know it's going to happen or it's going to come to fruition or it's going to work for us. Why don't we have enough faith to know that God is going to deliver us from whatever we're going through? Now, I'm not saying you don't have faith, but I'm going to tell you that this guy had crazy stupid faith. Now, does that sound crazy? Sure it does, but it's real. He had crazy, stupid faith. He had so much faith that he just knew that God was going to heal him. And here is what I'm talking about. This, to this story is called Seeing Their Faith. One day, while Jesus was teaching, some religious leaders were sitting... How bad? <laughs> My son did something crazy. One day... Don't do that again. Sorry. While Jesus was teaching, some religious leaders were sitting nearby. Such men were always around. They came from every village and from as far away as Jerusalem. So when it says as far away as Jerusalem, it doesn't mean like a five minute walk. It means they've traveled for a long time to see Jesus. Some other men came to where Jesus was teaching, carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Now let me explain this. A paralyzed man means he cannot walk. So these friends of his were Maybe they were hired. I'm assuming it was friends. But these men were carrying him on a mat. So how many men do you think were carrying him? At least two. Probably four, right? They could not push through the crowd to Jesus. So what did they do? They went up to the roof and opened a hole. Okay. I just happen to have a roof with a hole. We're getting there, aren't we? Okay. They lowered the sick man down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Jesus said to the man, Son, your sins are forgiven. The religious leaders said to each other, Who does this man think he is? He is mocking God. Only God can forgive sins. Because see, they didn't believe he was Jesus yet, right? So Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he asked them, Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or 
get up and walk. I'll prove that I have the power to forgive sins. Then Jesus said to the paralyzed man, stand up, take your mat. And remember, this is how he got there. His friends carried him in on a mat. So he said, stand up, take your mat and go on home. You were healed. What do you think people were thinking? They're like, wait, what? Is this for real? It's for real. Everyone watched as the man jumped up and went home praising the Lord. Jesus healed many people in his day, but this was not the reason he came. This story plainly shows why God sent Jesus to us. It was to take care of the problem of sin. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to forgive our sins. And actually it goes on, and this story was found in Luke chapter 5, and that story comes from verses 19 and 20. And the story goes on to say that he actually talks to these Pharisees, or these religious uh, teachers, and says, Look, I didn't come for the righteous. I came to heal the sinners. I came to save the sinners. That's why I came. So I want to show you something tonight. Mark, hop out of the car for me. Here we go. He has no idea what's going on. Drum roll, please. Da -da -da. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Take this bag and lower it through the roof. Okay. I've got enough faith I won't drop our dinner. It's pretty heavy. It's though. pretty heavy. Okay, are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Ah, wait a minute. Hold on. They can't see it. Let me move it over. All right, let's try it again. There it is. It's coming through the roof. That is what happened with that man they fought the crowd they went around the crowd and they lowered him through a roof on a mat so jesus could heal him that's how much faith they had how much faith do you have mark had faith in me that i wasn't going to drop our dinner i think he did you did didn't you i did he did Whew, thank goodness but my question to you is do you have enough faith to know that God is going to guide you, protect you? He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. What is so cool about this story is this man knew he was going to be healed. If he did, Jesus didn't have to hug him or, or run and, and drop him in a bucket of water or go over and have a big rod and like do some kind of ritual with him. He just said, hey, your faith has healed you. How much faith do you have? It says in the Bible, if we have faith as a mustard seed, and we've talked about that when I use the red pepper flake analogy, but I want you to know, faith is sometimes hard when we get, we lose our focus, or we start getting seeds of doubt. That's not from God. Those seeds of doubts, those seeds of doubt are not planted from God. They're planted from an evil force, the old stupid Satan trying to make us think that we can't be successful and we can't win. Yes, we can. We can do anything through Christ who strengthens us if we have the faith. I have faith that you will be with me tomorrow night or you'll be able to watch it at some point. I also have faith that this message and this story is going to go out and bless somebody and it might just be exactly what they needed to hear tonight. Thank you for sharing just a little bit of your evening with me tonight. And thank you so very much for supporting the Bold Movement. We appreciate you. I am Jill Walters. I am on the board of directors. And I want you to know that there are some things I would love for you to do. I would love for you to go to our app and download it and make sure that the, you can click on the little button there and it'll give you daily scripture readings. And I talked to you last night about just giving five minutes. If you can just read your Bible for five minutes a night, guess what happens? You start wanting to read more and more and more, but just start with just five. Can you give me just five? And then I want you to do one more thing. I want you to share something for people that are in need. I want you to give a special prayer to the people. How about the people in Zimbabwe? Yes, we'll give you guys. And how about for uh, the J.R. Stone's daughter? Yes, we will pray for them. And I want you to know that when you share what God has done for you, that feeling and that excitement and that enthusiasm is contagious. Go out, share what God's done for you, be faithful, be kind, have crazy stupid faith, and know that God wants nothing more than to love, prepare, and take care of you. Be bold. Be bold. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Pinterest. 
info, info at theboldmovement.com. And I will leave you with this. We have more errands to run. Be bold. Thank you. I am praying for you. Have a super great night. I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow night. Crazy Stupid Faith, we've got this. Let's go, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.